What is a level scoliosis? Scoliosis is an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine that always has a rotational component associated with it. And the rotation is always, or the twist is always, into the concavity of the scoliosis. In order for it to be diagnosed as a scoliosis, the Cobb angle measurement on a scoliosis x-ray needs to be of 10 degrees or greater. Now, when we talk about level scoliosis, level means left. So level scoliosis means the scoliosis curvature is bending towards the left. In the lumbar spine, we have a left scoliosis. A level scoliosis in the thoracic spine means it's bending to the left. Now, what makes that unusual in the thoracic spine is that it's going to be bending towards the heart. And in most cases of scoliosis in the thoracic spine, it's a dextroscoliosis, meaning it's bending away from the heart or to the right. When we look at the spinal sections, we understand that the cervical spine is the neck, the thoracic spine is the mid or upper back, and the lumbar spine is the lower back. Level scoliosis, the most common place you find it is in the lumbar spine or the low back. We normally don't find low level scoliosis in the thoracic spine. Like I said, most of those are dextroscoliosis that bend away from the heart. So a level scoliosis of the lumbar spine is considered more normal, and this is when there's an unnatural sideways curvature with rotation in the lumbar spine bending to the left, the convexities to the left. The scoliosis curve is in the lumbar spine and the lumbar spine is most commonly affected by this type of curve. The thoracic spine is much less common. Um, there are different types of scoliosis cases. Remember, all types of scoliosis cases are, have many different types of associated causations. The most common associated causation is something called idiopathic. And idiopathic scoliosis is saying that there is no, no single cause, I meaning it's unknown cause. The remaining 20% are associated with known causes, and this is something called neuromuscular scoliosis, congenital scoliosis, degenerative scoliosis, and traumatic scoliosis. Let me review each one. So neuromuscular scoliosis is when a patient has a neuromuscular condition, something affecting the nerve system or the connective the tissue of the body, which can lead to scoliosis. Things like cerebral palsy, Marfan syndrome, ehlers Downer syndrome, um, also things that affect uh, spinal cord or nerves themselves, things like a syrinx or, or something along those lines can lead to a neuromuscular case. Congenital scoliosis is, happens in utero. It's when a patient's born with scoliosis. This is when there's a hemivertebra within the spine that doesn't fully develop, and this hemivertebra will cause a scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is when something small happens in the spine, remains uncorrected. The spine goes through a degenerative pattern in the adult stage, and normally in later stage life, plus 40, 50 years of age, the person would develop a scoliosis as a result of the asymmetrical degeneration. And traumatic is when the patient goes through trauma, e either externally or internally within the body, which can lead to a rapid form of scoliosis. Typically, all forms of scoliosis can go either to the left or to the right. Typical curves uh, are the way when they bend in that normal pattern to that area meaning a typical scoliosis will typically bend to the left in the lumbar spine and the right into the thoracic side. Atypical scoliosis cases when the things when they bend in the opposite direction of the typical form. So that would be a right lumbar and a left thoracic. When we see typical atypical scoliosis cases, we're always thinking there could be a neuromuscular condition, a congenital problem, some kind of degeneration, or as a result of trauma. So atypical forms are normally not associated with idiopathic scoliosis. Atypical forms are normally associated with one of the other four types. With level scoliosis, this can be a red flag if it's in the thoracic spine, because like I said, thoracic spine normally has a dextroscoliosis. So what are some common signs or symptoms as a result of level of scoliosis, where the first thing is going to be uneven shoulders, uneven hips, there's a head not uncentered to the rest of the torso, arms and legs that appear to hang at different lengths, uh, development of a rib, rib arch, and ill-fitting clothing. It's the same things that we see with a dextroscoliosis and the same thing we see with the diagnosis of any scoliosis. Posture deviation tends to be the first diagnosis, or the first thing we find in adolescence. In the adult stage, level of scoliosis can normally lead to pain. And if it's in the lumbar spine, lumbar spine scoliosis cases tend to cause more pain than thoracic spine scoliosis cases. So we see a level of scoliosis in the lumbar spine. In the adult case, the most common the most common symptom could be pain, normally low back pain, normally left leg pain, left low back, you know, sciatic into the left leg, things like that. Uh, range of motion issues can also be a sign. It could be some stiffness in the adult case. They have a loss of range of motion. But normally pain starts to occur as a result of compression over time. When we look at level of scoliosis, we know that treating curves smaller before they get 
bigger is by far the most effective form of treating scoliosis. The Scoliosis Reduction Center offers proactive conservative treatment options to help reduce the curves as they're progressing, so therefore to stop the greater impact they could have on scoliosis cases. Whether it be a level scoliosis or a dextroscoliosis, the goal is the same, is to reduce the curve and to deliver a straighter spine because it, where its spine is as straight as possible is where it's less likely to cause issues. These treatment plans are crafted around the conditions underlining cause, whether it be idiopathic, neuromuscular, congenital, or traumatic, right, or any of the causes that are associated with it. And the goal is a structural reduction to deal with the curve in a structural nature to, de de to develop the best options possible and the best results possible. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.